I'd like to thank God for my salvation and for this church. And I'd like to sing the song, Even in the Valley. I'm sure that you can relate that God has been good in the valley even. High upon this mountain, the sun is shining bright. My heart is filled with gladness, here above the cares of life. But I've just come through the valley of trouble, fear, and pain. It was there I came to know my God enough to stand and say even in the valley god is good even in the valley he's faithful and true he carries his children through like he said he God is good. This road of life has led you to a valley of defeat. You wonder if the Father has heard your desperate plea. There is hope in that rugged place where tears of sorrow dwell. Can't you hear him quietly whispering, I'm here and all is well. Even in the valley, God is Beautifully done for the Lord, Tammy. Thank you. Book of James. Last time I was in James, I didn't get to catch the traction that I wanted. You know what catching traction is. You know, pause attraction. Book of James, chapter number one. I like that James is talking to the brother, and I like that he's talking to the converted Jews. I like that he's talking to the Christians. I like that as he does this, <clears throat> he's got God's, God's children in mind, in view, as he pens these words. We're included in that tonight. And, uh, you know, I covered some ground on this last time on 
a couple weeks ago, but uh, take a look with me in verse number 12. Blessed is the man that does what by the Holy Scriptures? Endureth temptation. Now we've covered these, some of these passages and some in depth, some not so much in depth, but blessed is the man who endureth temptation. So if we talk, if we let the word of God speak to, to us as believers tonight, as believers, we let the word of God speak to us. This, this word's telling me <clears throat> that I'm going to be happy when I endure temptation. But if I submit to it or give in to it, I have not endured, so I'm not going to be so happy. I hope you get the same idea from that text uh, that I'm seeing. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. It's a specific group of people such as us tonight. Man, there's so many, there's so many, I hear so many professing Christians on television, on the radio, talk shows, uh, people that I know that profess to be Christians talking about uh, temptation. And I've actually heard them say, you know, the Lord's tempting me to, and, and you know, that, that's pretty blasphemous here. Um, as we look at the rest of this, let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. God doesn't tempt us. And he certainly doesn't. He says, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. God never tempts us with those things. We learn from studying about Joseph this morning that he'll take evil and use it for, yeah, what, what, what may be meant for evil, he'll take it and make it turn out for good, uh, which takes us to Romans 8, 28, amen? Um, for those of us that love the Lord, all things work together. For those who are called according to his purpose and love him, yeah. But God doesn't tempt us. and Not, not only does he not tempt us, but it's not a good idea to accusing him of such either because he never, <coughs> ever, under any circumstance, works that way. But let no man say in verse 13, when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted. Now watch this. When he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. There's not a one of us either standing or sitting here tonight that doesn't have our own lust in the flesh of some something. But if you only have one, you let me know who you are. <laughs> let me know who you are. I can hear some big mouth out on the street protesting. And I want to go through the TV and find them. <laughs> so you see, that's, that's a lust in the flesh. It's like, I want to satisfy that, that lust in the flesh. And so what do I have to do? Click, <laughs> turn it off, right? Get up, walk away, get myself out of that environment, out of that situation. And otherwise, the lust of my flesh begins to entice me to a situation. Fourteen, but every man is tempted when he is what? You ever, you ever try to coax a dog with some food? Draw him away from something? Uh, you ever draw away your kid from something? Uh, yeah, sure, we, we do those things. Um, when we're drawn away of our own lust and enticed, this temptation that the Bible's talking about is, is a temptation that uh, there's always an immoral, immoral purpose behind it, always. And, it, and it, it seeks to draw us into sin. It's a difference, there's a difference between 
trials in general and trials that we are enticed into. Th take Joseph this morning, okay? Joseph ended up in some pretty rough situations. But it wasn't lust of the flesh that drew him to that, was it? He was following the paths of God. It wasn't a temptation or a lust of flesh that drew him into where he's at. James is talking about the lust of our flesh. Um, go to 1 Peter, uh, back to 1 Peter chapter 4. We, we looked at that a little bit this morning, but we're going to take another look at that. 1 Peter chapter number 4. In verse 12, again, <clears throat> Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. The scripture, Peter's telling us that, that first of all, the beloved, the saved, those of God, don't think this strange when this happens to us because it's, it's, we're, it's destined uh, it, to happen to us. Uh, that we're going to have a fiery trial, which is to try us, as though some strange thing happened. But we're to rejoice in that, because who, where does the fiery trial come from? There you go. Right. It's coming from Satan. We're not going to face those fiery trials if we're off the path of God. Uh, it's when we get on the path of God that we start facing those fiery trials. And it's not God that's trying to tempt us with those things. It's Satan that's trying to stop us. When he, he wants us to bail. He wants us to bail on God. Not bail as in lose our salvation. Bail as get off the path that God has you on. That's what he wants us to do. Joseph wouldn't do that and it worked out very well. In the scripture we see in verse 13, he says, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's, what? Listen, if you name the name of Jesus Christ and have no sufferings, I think you're just, you're just naming the name, that's all you're doing. I don't really think you have him, because if you have him, there's going to be some sufferings. We know that. He, he tells us this. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be what? For the name of Christ, what's he say we're to be? Happy. 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 You guys think I'm being all tongue-in-cheek or cocky or something like that. We say, hey, blessed are you who are persecuted for my sake. <laughs> Lay it on me. <laughs> I'll take all the blessings <laughs> all that I can get. But we should never be getting that from our own, should we? Silence. We should never get that from our own, should we? That persecution, that should never come from the family of God. Never. We see that, we see that he says that um, in, in verse 14, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is what? Yeah, yeah. We're going to be facing a lot of that. We are such a little, th we're like a thimble in, com in comparison to a 55-gallon drum in this world. We really are, and we're going to be facing it, but just remember that, okay? Don't, don't, don't pick up your marbles and go home. Stay in the game, stay on the path, and do that. It's going to happen. And those trials and fiery trials are going to come upon us. But here's the thing. Here's the lust of the flesh. Lust will draw us in. So when our lust of the flesh flares up, now listen, we have to practice this. When the lust of the flesh flares up, to go contrary to what God says that we should not be doing, we need to allow ourselves to walk in the Spirit and overcome that immediately. Immediately, we have to go, oh, I feel the urge to, it's time to leave. 
time to turn around, it's time to go, it's time to get out of the conversation, it's time to stop listening, it's just time to get out. That's what we have to be able to do. And with the Holy Spirit in us, we can do it if we listen. And we know, we know, but sometimes it's just, it hooks us and it draws us in. And then all of a sudden, it conceives. And it becomes what? Sin. Yeah, it becomes sin. Right away, it becomes sin. And, you know, the devil's saying, oh, don't worry about that. You're not going to lose your salvation. Don't worry about that. But you lost your witness. I mean, you lost, boy, I tell you what, when you lose your witness for the Lord, that's something hard to get back. You got to move up, pull up stakes, move away and go somewhere else to try, you know, to try to do it in your own venue. I mean, you all know Christians who have lost their witness. Are they any good here anymore? Not really. They've had to pull up stakes and go somewhere else. And so it's, it's a terrible thing. So we don't want to do that. We look at the scriptures <coughs> when we look further in verse number 15. But let none of you suffer as a what? So, so you know, James is saying, that's pretty drastic. That's a big jump. Uh, he, you know, we're to suffer for Christ. And go th if Christ suffered, we're to suffer. But don't suffer as a murderer. Don't go out killing people. Don't go out killing babies, unborn babies, and call yourself a Christian. Don't be suffering as a murderer. Don't let anybody, don't put yourself in a position to where people can go, murderer. That's no place for a Christian to put themselves. So they, so they have to get out of there. What, what else? Let none of you suffer, or as a what? Or as a thief. I know lots of Christians that are thieves. Isn't that terrible to say? I know them personally. Don't suffer as a thief, the word of God says. That you don't, you know, you want to suffer for Christ, but don't be suffering as a murderer, or don't be suffering as a thief, or as an evildoer. Uh-oh. Look what he lumped in with a murderer, a thief, and an evildoer. Christians have a real tough time with this one. I see it all the time. I see it all the time. All the time. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. The lust of the flesh. We're to never, ever be pointed out and identified. It's put in a position to where we can be pointed at and identified that we are a busybody in other men's <coughs> matters. You know who's the worst in that? Christian friends are the worst. That's true. They really are. I listen to Christians talk about their Christian friends. And I'm thinking, la, 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 la. <laughs> What do you want to do that for? So we have to condition ourselves, right? Because we all lust for good information, don't we? These ears do. Look how big mine are. <laughs> As you get older, they get bigger. Hearing gets harder, but the ears get bigger. That doesn't make any sense. It should get better. <laughs> so lusting for those things, all of a sudden we should be able to hear what the Word's telling us, and the Holy Spirit is prodding us and convicting us at that very point in time that if you can't keep your mouth shut after you hear this, then don't hear it. Go away. Get away from it. Get away from it. And those of us on the receiving end, now I've become pretty good at this to the point that it offends some people. Surprise. Why are you telling me this? See, I'm not afraid to ask somebody, why are you telling me this? If you're telling me some other men's matter, why are you telling me this? 
because it does a couple of things. It keeps me conditioned to where I'm supposed to be. And number two, hopefully it rings their bell, right? Amen. So take that one, borrow that phrase. Why are you telling me this? When somebody starts to tell you about other men's matters, we're not to be a busybody in other men's matters at all, at all. I'm not getting very far. So I'm going to stop right there. We're going to do a baptism. You didn't get a whole lot there tonight, did you? <laughs> Amen. Well, here's what we're going to do. Maybe uh, Brother Adolph can lead you all in great is thy faithfulness. Huh? And uh, I'm going to go back and put my cape on. <laughs> in my phone booth back here. <laughs> and uh, Sister Shirley and my wife are going to go over here on the other side and we're going to get ready to uh, enter into the ordinance of baptism. And uh, so if you... Adolf, you can fill the time. I got, I got confidence. Right. Number 40, I believe that is. I turned right to it. Great is thy faithfulness. Number 40. We came in early. She got wet, and I told her, I said, you're going to get wet early. So, <laughs> so get my piano player ready here. Anytime. Let her rip.
like to listen to a group called the Isaacs, and they sing a song, I'm thanking Lord for the things I never thank you for. You know, we always look at the big things and how God does, but about the little things. God's faithful. He takes care of all the little stuff, you know, things that we never even think about. He's faithful to us much more than we ever are to him. You know, there are times when he should strike me down, you know, but he's faithful. He told me that if I put my soul in his hands, he'll take care of me and I'll have eternal life even if I mess up. Right, Harold? And that is the first thing to be thankful for that because we're going to mess up every day, right? I'm human. I do it all the time. This old Harold says, this flesh just gets me now and then. And anger, another thing, you know, kick the dog like Harold says, you know. But, you know, he's faithful. He takes care of us. He gives us, you know, we're not always happy, right? But as a Christian, even though I'm not always happy, I have this joy in there, knowing that, you know, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through this. He'll bring me through, and there's light at the end of the tunnel. There's joy in the morning. So it's, it's wonderful to be able to, to have that, to have that inner peace in your soul, knowing that he's got it all control. I can't do it. I'm just me. But he can take care of it all, right? So, Pastor, back there. All right. Thank you. Uh, one of my favorite songs. One of my favorite songs. I don't know how the ladies are coming yet. My wife's going to give me the high sign here momentarily. If we can, are we ready? All right. I'll help Sister Shirley down here. Stand you right here, right here. Sister Shirley's nervous. I promise I wouldn't keep her under any more than five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this water feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Praise the Lord for baptistry heaters. <laughs> so appreciate that. You know, I there were. I want to tell you, church family, Shirley's been here longer than most of you but there were some things in her life that uh, needed to be put in order right mm -hmm. and uh, that's been that's been done and uh, so there's been no doubt in the pastor's heart about her salvation her testimony for the Lord she's a precious soul to the Lord I believe he saved her I hear we we've all heard her testimony thankful for the Lord for salvation so I don't believe any of that's at issue tonight and uh, so she's 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 in a position now to be able to be offered in baptism to the Lord and uh, I'm proud of her for doing that tonight and uh, as I'm sure you all are as well and um, so Sister Shirley I promised her it would be quick effortless and painless <laughs> and uh, and but, but something to glory and rejoice over. So with that said, uh, before I do that, uh, before I have you all wet trying to talk while you're wet, you've had opportunity to read the church bylaws and yes. constitution? Yes. And do you accept those as your own? Yes. Okay. And after baptism, I will be presenting Shirley before the body for a vote on membership which pleases me very much so to do that. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you to have a seat right here. And if you need to take a picture close up, please come close. Are you stuck in 
Yes, uh, I am talking to whomever's going to take pictures. Uh, don't be afraid to take a good close-up shot for her. And um, I'm sure it's something that she'll like to have at some point, right? Yeah. Ready? <laughs> I'm ready. You ready? I'm, don't take off on me. Don't take off on me. Okay. Okay. we got to wait for Robin to get in, get in their spot here. All right. My, my blessed sister Shirley. Based upon the profession of your faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Buried in baptism, raised in newness of life. Amen. See, now we really are the blind leading the blind. Neither one of us have glasses, and you get water in your eyes. Amen, sis. Amen. Um, I'll tell you what. While she's getting dressed, she said, Pastor, can you play family? Can we sing family of God? She, that's what it means to her tonight, to be a, a member of the family of God. So we were able to dig that up a little bit. Brother Adolph's going to lead you in that. And uh, so, based on her profession of faith, salvation in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and also, also that she has reviewed the bylaws and constitution of the New Testament Baptist Church and accepted them as her own, I present Sister Shirley to you for membership consideration. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Amen. Welcome to the family, God, the New Testament. Back <laughs> All right, let me help you up the steps here. Here we go. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joined as with Jesus as we travel. Let's have a word of prayer and then we can uh, make sure that you uh, welcome her in, okay? Well, dear Heavenly Father, it's been a beautiful day. Lord, we had the opportunity to hear a good sermon this morning. The news of the weekend has been good. Lord, the promise of the future in you is good, Lord. So just be with us this week as we go through our lives. Lord, help us, Lord, to stand forth and be the kind of people you want us, Lord, to be uh, light on the hill, Lord. Thank you so much for Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross that we might have that joy in our souls. And we'll give you all the praise and thanks in his name. Amen. So, thank you.